is constant when you're trying to. This is all she does. Just, and then her head. She's all she shot. pushes her head down. Trying to achieve that, and that would certainly be the. What's the easiest way to get her volume in a, in a fish? We, no, we squirt it. We squirt it right down her throat. Okay. It's but such so a small amount. No. Yes, we did. We had to dilute it all. We made solution up every two days. It took a number of days to get the effect. Yeah. And the second turtle, we tried a little higher on it. I want to say it was 0.03 on the second guy. It was uh, 0.01 and yes, 0.02 on the, on the first, first guy. First one, yes. So this is what you're talking about, the bone turning brown then? Right there, because that's bone. I know, Al, I know. Well, it'll, it'll turn brown and it'll undermine it and it basically right just pops off. That's bone right there. Yep. And that, that should just, at this stage, that should just pop off. The it problem does. is... I don't think I'm going to pop it off now. No. Okay. But it usually is correlated with them gaining a lot of weight and, and healing underneath it. So she's holding on to the old tissue because she's not healed. Longer than we expected, but it doesn't seem to work. Okay. So that's it's going up. Yeah. It's going up like this, but I don't think, but I think there's enough circumference on the bottom half. The top half we could probably pull out if we had to okay. on that side. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. But it's, you're exactly right. It's the same thing that happened on the other side, yep. but the slab fracture was on the back. Yep. Yeah. Do it. Pull it off. Oh, good one. Sorry, B. <laughs>A lot of animals like turtles um, are suffering because of, I think, our probably indignation and our ignorance right now. And you're seeing that in everything from boat strikes and natural just injuries that these turtles are occurring and coming in and just having all these heartfelt problems. And you see a turtle that's been impacted by humans so heavily, it just rips you to the core because you want to reach out and help and do something to ensure that they didn't get hurt in the first place. And then all of a sudden you're there and you're seeing this animal and you're like, oh my God, this is a result of what we've done to the environment and we're not taking care of it like we should be. And that's just such a heart-wrenching feeling. Basically, if you have a live turtle, the biggest process is getting it back here. They, we just want to go get it. We don't analyze anything. We put it in a, a crate or a tub and we get her back here right away. Because here is where we have our vets. This is where we have our people that can take a look at it and do something with it. What happens generally is when we have a stranding and basically we're going out to rescue, the person or persons who find the animal on the beach or wherever they're stranding, they're gonna call 911 or call our aquarium. The problem is, is that most people don't know CMA's phone number, okay? You don't have, you know, Clearwater Marine Aquarium stranding team phone number. We would love for you to just call us first. The worst things you can do, obviously, to me is pick it up and move it, okay? That is the worst thing you do because you don't know what's wrong with it. And you may move it and you may break something or something like that. I, uh, it actually got hit by a boat and we were out there riding jet skis and he kept going down and kept popping right back up so I knew something was wrong so I jumped off the jet ski and grabbed him and then so I couldn't get him back on the jet ski so someone actually had to pull me over by my life jacket pulled me up behind the ski and then uh, brought him over to the Marriott and then the Clearwater uh, Aquarium and we got him. Okay, so the appropriate response if you encounter a stranded animal, uh, first do not try to contact that animal yourself. That's for the animal safety and your own. Uh, an injured animal is probably not in the best of moods and uh, they do have uh, teeth and ways that they could harm you. And so for your own safety you don't want to touch them, but also for the animal safety you don't want to further injure them. A lot of these animals are designed for living in the water and just being on land, that extra gravity and pull is, is causing problems and shuffling and moving them around uh, could displace their uh, organs and so you cause lots of damage with them. So what you want to do is notify someone who can help you. Uh, the good news now with uh, smartphones and that, a lot of people have access and could may be able to call somewhere like the aquarium directly, but what I would recommend, the easiest way would be to contact the local police and then they would be able to uh, get through to the proper channel. As far as preventative, obviously recycling trash because when the bags get in the water, they can, sea turtles can swallow them and it affects their lungs, so that's very bad. Fishing lines, hooks, all of the things that, um, you know, that you know about, but you've got to remember because in Florida we do a lot of fishing. And so there's a lot of monofilament, crab traps, winter story, all that kind of stuff like that. So you just got to be aware of plastic bottles, all of that. Recycling is critical.
Uh, yeah, the, the seagulls recycle it. The pelicans. The line. No, we don't. We don't. Uh, I just throw in the trash. You know that. Do I find myself getting personally attached to the animals? I can tell you that on one rescue, I got a live turtle and put it in my car, and I accidentally named her, which you should never do. But I named her just my own personal name, and I came in. And we, um, she came in here and she had to be euthanized. And so when they pass away, it does. But when we release them, it's a wonderful feeling. I mean, it is just, yes, 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 but you're sad because they're leaving. But yes, I do get personally attached. And that's okay. That's why I'm here. Um, CMA has opened my eyes to the entire rescue rehabilitation side. Um, I never got to see that side before. So being able to see the full cycle, see an animal who can't help itself because something's wrong with it in the wild. It comes in, you're able to rehabilitate it. When you take it out there and it just swims as fast as it can out of your arms, it crawls down the beach as fast as it can and it just hits the ocean water and just goes, is the best feeling in the world. Uh, seeing that they're now healthy again and they're ready to go. I was trying to get one message across from uh, the aquarium. I guess that would be that uh, you know, that everybody has an impact on our ocean animals and all your actions to be responsible with what you do to try to uh, help us uh, avoid the injuries and then also to support uh, our aquarium, of course, but uh, any different animal organizations, lots of good organizations out there, and unfortunately with uh, different changes in uh, support and government fundings, it's become very important that people are able to help and support. So I say pick a organization that you feel strongly about and support what they do and be responsible for your own actions.